Hello, my wonderful friends. Meg is here on a beautiful day. We're in chapter three of Circe. It was a good chapter. It, it was rich. And you know what? For me, it really built the anticipation for getting to Circe's Island. I am just about fed up with the gods and the drama and the nonsense. I, I am so ready for us to get to Circe's Island. And then this chapter also, it brought out so much emotion. It, and I, I could feel everything Circe was feeling. So let's get into it. Are you guys all enjoying this? Uh, please go to the comments. Let me know. And, you know, I, I hate to do this because it's like a friendship that we have here. But but I, I have to ask, please make sure you remember to hit that like button uh, so we keep the channel going. Uh, you know, the algorithm favors the ones that get the like button hit. And I don't want our, our, our whole channel to drop because we're doing something we love here, book club. All right, let's go over to chapter three. Oh, I, I wanted to read this to you. So this is uh, by Lord Byron. And it's a beautiful poem, and it's about Prometheus. It says, The godlike crime was to be kind and strengthen man with his own mind. Oh, I thought that was so beautiful. Okay, chapter three. It started off, When I awoke, Prometheus was gone. She hears about his unspeakable punishment. She thinks to herself, I should have brought him a spear, right, instead of the nectar. But then she thought, that's foolishness. He didn't want a weapon. He had given himself up. I don't know, that just hit me. He didn't want a weapon. You know, he's known as the god of wisdom, of foresight. He's fighting this battle with the mind, just like his creation manned, that's their superpower. That's how we're going to win, right? Not with hate and anger and warring and fighting, right? He, he's a little smarter than that. I like that. Oh, so, oh, my, my. Percy's flicks an almond at Circe's face. Pasiphae, of course, is just laughing at her and mocking her. Percy says, father can't even give her away. Believe me, he's tried. My mother looks back over her delicate shoulder. At least we don't have to listen to her voice. Can you imagine this is your family? Oh my gosh. Uh, she's just a freak. Right? Just, just talking down all the time. She says, my mother whelped again. <laughs> a boy. My Father blessed him, but spoke no prophecy, so my mother looked around for somewhere to leave him. My aunts were wise by this point and kept their hands behind their backs. Circe says, I'll take him. Right? Mother scoffs. Well, at least he'll be of some use. Let, let me just read this little section because it's kind of beautiful. Uh, father names him Aedes, which means eagle. I love that. So you got hawk and eagle. His skin was warm in my arms as a sun-hot stone and soft as a petal velvet. Is petal velvet? Yeah. There had never been a sweeter child. He smelled like honey and just kindled flames. What a beautiful description there. You know, is, your, is she, Madeline Miller, what a way of describing what a newborn baby God would smell like. You know, I see mothers do that a lot with babies. They, they like to sniff them. They got that baby scent. Here's the baby God scent. And she describes it, just kindled flames and honey. I think that's beautiful. Uh, he ate from my fingers and did not flinch at my frail voice. He only wanted to sleep curled against my neck while I told him stories. Every moment he was with me, I felt a rushing in my throat, which was my love for him. So great sometimes, I could not speak. He seemed to love me back, and that was the greater wonder. She she's, hasn't experienced this yet, right? She has so much love, 
and she's getting it back. She's never felt this back. So sad, and but so beautiful. Uh, 80s got permission from father to leave the halls and found us a deserted seaside. Oh, when I read that, I'm all, all right, here we go. We're getting closer. I'm so ready to get to the beach, guys. <laughs> it says the beach was small and pale and the trees barely scrub. But to me, it seemed a great lush wilderness. Uh, 80s, he knew about herbs. First time he talks about pharmaca, right? It's that magic. They could work wonders upon the world. I like this. This is important. Magic, pharmaca, it works with feeling, focus, intention, right? But feeling is a big part of it. And, and uh, 80s is figuring that out and now trying to teach Cersei to tap into this. He says, how does your divinity feel? I think we should ask ourselves that question. How does your divinity feel? And then feel into it. He tells her, because she's not quite grasping it yet. He, he says, uh, let me tell you how mine feels. Like a column of water that pours ceaselessly. Ceases, boy, that's a hard word. Ceaselessly. <laughs> oh, over itself and is clear down to its rocks. He says, now you tell me. She tries to answer, but she's just trying to kind of repeat what he said, like a breeze on a crag, like a gull screaming from its nest. He shakes his head. No, you're just saying those things because of what I said. What does it really feel like, Cersei? Close your eyes. Think. She presses her hand to her chest, and after a, a little, it, she starts to feel something. And she says that she feels like a shell. Now he's asking, okay, what's in that shell? It, you know, is it a snail or whatever? She says, she says, no, it, it, it's empty. It's air. And he's really working with her here. This is beautiful. He tells her nothing in air is not the same thing. Nothing is an empty void, while air is what fills all else. It is breath and life and spirit and the words we speak. This is a good book, guys. My brother, the philosopher, Circe says. She compares him to um, Prometheus, the only other philosopher god that she had ever met. Then she tells, uh, because she's now she's thinking of Prometheus, she tells him her little secret about giving him nectar. Of course, Aedes listens and... But then tells her, you know, don't ever tell anyone else this. Because, you know, if... if dad finds out you're going to be in big trouble, you know, and uh, so he, he listens to it. He, he notices something that uh, Prometheus was a god of prophecy. He would have known he was going to be punished and how, yet he did it anyway. He did it anyway. He, he is a god of prophecy. He knew what's coming. He did it anyway. Prometheus took up the flame for mankind. He would have known what he was walking towards. The eagle and that desolate eternal crag. Wow. That's love for your children. But I think he saw it'd be worth it. There's a reason he gave himself up. Uh, Pasiphae is contracted in marriage. I thought this was kind of neat because Cersei's excited to see, uh, she wants to see what mortals look like, right? She says, all those creatures Prometheus had given his eternal, etern, etern, I wish I could speak today. <laughs> oh my God. This isn't even, this is an easy word and I can't spit it out. One of those days, guys. All those creatures Prometheus had given his eternity for mortals, Right, so she's excited to see the mortals. She's never seen the Olympians before. Um, she's heard all the stories uh, about like nymphs that were caught out by themselves with humans, the mortals, and they got raped and horrible abuses took place. Right, but she's, she's looking at them. She's thinking they look so timid, so weak. How, how could they rape 
even the lesser gods didn't make sense to her. And then she noticed how the mortals were looking down because just as much as a lot of the lower gods, the nymphs with less power feared men, men feared the gods. She said an ill-timed glance, a foot set in the wrong place could bring down death and woe upon their families for dozens of generations. Right, So a lot of fear. And she thinks, do you know what? I see it like a great chain of fear with Zeus at the top. Wow. Uh, Aedes says, come on, Cersei, I found the Olympians. I thought this was cool. Could you imagine the feeling? Of, it'd be like for us here, like I, I think of the, the gods, you know, I think of like if we're at a wedding and we found where Jesus is sitting and Buddha is sitting, you know, and, and all these people we've heard about, you know, and we get to go actually see them. Right. And this is what's happening here with Cersei. She said, I followed my blood beating within me. I'd never seen one before. Those deities who rule from their celestial thrones. Aedes drew me to a window overlooking a sun dazzled courtyard. And there they were. Apollo, the Lord of the Lear, gleaming bow, his twin moonlit Artemis, the pitiless huntress. Uh, oh, boy. Here's a big word. He Hephaestus, blacksmith of the gods, who had made the chains that held Prometheus still, brooding Poseidon, whose trident commands the waves. Could you imagine seeing all these? Uh, Demet Demeter, later, my God, Vegas, get it together, man. Demeter, lady of bounty, whose harvest nourished all the world. I stared at them. Uh, gliding sleek in their power. The very air seemed to give way where they walked. Do you see Athena? Right? Oh my gosh. Can you imagine the excitement that would be? Um, and then here comes the news. Aedes is telling Circe right after the wedding, uh, father's given me a kingdom and I will live there. Circe, this breaks her heart. She says, no, you, you know, what, what about me? You can't leave me. You don't know what it was like. Uh, you know, you got to take me. He goes, no, you'll, you're you going to have to get your own kingdom. And uh, he just kind of turns away and walks off to get on the golden chariot and head out to his kingdom. And didn't that just break your heart? She loves him so much. And he does love her, but her love is a lot stronger for him uh, than his for her, obviously. And in a world in a world of gold, he was gone. Uh, Percy's left a few days later without his sister there. He had no reason to stay, and uh, his dad was mad at him for questioning him earlier and stuff. Then uh, this here, they're still just giving her grief. You know, he he says, "At least I won't have to listen to your annoying voice anymore." Um, so she's just laying around. In the empty halls, her throat scraping with loneliness. When she could not bear it any longer, she fled to 80s in my old deserted shore. She went to that island of hers and she's thinking to herself, you know, back at the wedding, I should have spoken to those mortals. I, I could have begged among them for a husband. I was a daughter of Helios. Surely one of those ragged men would have had me. Anything would be better than this. And then it ends us with, and then I saw the boat. Oh, what a great say. Got me so excited. I can't wait to get into chapter four. And then I saw the boat. So she's on her little island there, feeling pretty down. But there's a boat on the horizon coming. Who could be in that boat? What do we have to look forward to? to tomorrow guys are you enjoying book club i love doing this so much this is one of my favorite things we do here of course talking about asha is my all-time favorite but this is good stuff right here all right guys i love you so much be blessed and we'll see you tomorrow